Hello, I'm Charles Coves, Australasia's passion provocateur. Welcome to this week's episode of the Charles Coves Show. In this week's episode, I invite you to explore your beliefs about your ageing, about you getting old, and about others getting old. How old will you be when you die of old age? If you die of an accident, that's a different matter. But what does old age mean to you? And when is it going to do you in, as they said in My Fair Lady? Your beliefs and actions around old age are crucial to your longevity. I aim to live and be healthy until I am at least 120 years of age. Stick around and I'll tell you how I'm going to do it. This show gives you clues on how to do stuff. And this show is founded on the formula SA plus P equals S. Self-awareness plus passion equals success. Your self-awareness plus your passion will give you success. Since 1993, when I left my successful legal career as a tax lawyer, after 20 years of practice, I have inspired, provoked, educated audiences about the power of passion, about the wonderful, wonderful benefits of discovering and pursuing your passion to live an amazing life. I've been a professional speaker. I've done presentations to large conferences, small conferences, worked with teams, worked as an executive coach, helping people on this journey of living life with passion. I've written two books, Passionate People Produce and Passionate Performance, both of which are still available and both of which change people's lives. How do I know? Because they tell me that they do. This weekly show is also guided by Socrates' famous quote, the unexamined life is not worth living. I'm delighted to have you with me if you're a regular viewer, regular listener, and I'm constantly aiming to share the messages in this show far and wide. So if you can help on that, I'd be most grateful. You can see I'm wearing my red jacket, red, the color of passion. This is so that when you see red, you think of passion. You think of me, of course, nicely, I hope. And whenever you see red, it reminds you of the value of discovering your own passion and pursuing it and inspiring those around you, your family, your friends, your work colleagues, to live their lives with passion. Each week I explore one big idea. This is episode 72, so we've had 72 big ideas so far. One idea I focus on because too many ideas leads to no action. I also share some practical resources that help to reinforce the application of the idea in your life. It'll be a quote, a book, some song lyrics, a health tip, a spiritual tip, and some humour. Life was not meant to be serious or too serious. This show is not politically correct. I have no desire to be politically correct. I support useful addictions. One of them, as regular viewers and listeners know, is my addiction to coffee. Mm. Thanks again to my mate Pete for his Republic coffee. I wonder if it's any different to Monarchist coffee. Mm. There's something to ponder. This show definitely subscribes to the view that we have a spiritual life. So if you don't honour the human spirit, you don't believe that you have a spirit, then this show is not for you. I think the human spirit is just amazing. And my definition of passion is that it's a source of unlimited energy from your spirit, from your soul, from your heart, that enables you to produce extraordinary results. So before we get to the big idea, the exploration of old age, of ageing, let's review what's happened over the course of the past week since episode 71. 
Well, the global headlines are dominated by the jab. Dominated by mandatory jabs. I call the gene manipulating jab. And there is allegedly something running around that's going to kill everybody and so take this jab and if you don't take this jab then you won't be a good citizen i say bullshit regular viewers and listeners know this you can choose to take the jab if you wish i happen to think that's a pretty foolish choice governments are working on the manipulation of fear and the game that's being played is a big global game it is unfolding you don't have to support that game because i say to you it will take away your freedom it will take away your ability to live life as you want to live it the question of whether we go back to normal that's going to be interesting but i believe we are in a war and it's a very interesting type of war not against not against some microscopic thing i think we've got a battle on our hands that ties into the great reset that ties into government desire to control people and the globalist agenda of one world government that's what i think is going on and if you don't know anything about the great reset then i urge you to look at my one of my earlier episodes but also to do your own reading about it klaus schwab is big about what the great reset is about you know this is this is you will the mantra is you won't be able to own property and you'll be happy about it do you think about that huh you think you worked hard all your life and now you're getting into old age you've got assets and you won't be able to own any property because the state will own it all and will give you a UBI, a universal basic income. They're the big global forces going on here. And don't be, don't be fooled that this is just a matter of science, this question of manda mandatory jabs being put into people and all sorts of new rules and house arrest. I don't call it the L word. From now on, it is house arrest in Victoria. Our seven-day house arrest regime is now being extended for, 20, for another seven days, up to 21 days. These are the lies that are being peddled using fake science as a basis for making such decisions. So it gets very difficult to know what's true, what's not true. And I have spent a lot of time studying these issues. So any thoughts that I share with you here are not unthinking thoughts i'm not just going blah this is what i live my life around i had a father who taught me to be aware of what's happening buckminster fuller who i'm a big fan of said be comprehensively informed i strive to be comprehensively informed to take account of all matters going on not just a myopic little view of what i might be doing with my life why? Because I'm interested in humanity. I'm interested in the future of humanity. I'm interested in the future of our planet. And I'm interested in my behavior according with good information, not bullshit. All you have to look at to understand whether there's bullshit going on is the remarkably different ways that the states of Australia, the states of the US and countries all around the world are handling this alleged drama with a microscopic thing. I won't even call it anything because the censors are busily knocking at anything that questions the narrative. The narrative that government wants you to believe, not the narrative that is closer to truth. I'm interested in truth. I'm interested in seeking out truth. I'm interested in good information not fake information these house arrests in victoria in australia in the us are fantastic for big business they are destroying small medium enterprises 
And what's interesting about that is that small to medium enterprises are run by people who had a passion, who were independent thinkers, who were risk takers. Our governments around the world are trying to kill the risk takers, the independent thinkers like me. However, I won't be silenced. I do not consider myself under house arrest. I do not consider laws passed under alleged states of emergency to be valid law. As a lawyer, I consider them unconstitutional, unenforceable, invalid. If you want more information on that, send me an email, charles at covest.com. I will happily share some useful legal information with you. And so since I'm not under house arrest, I'm able to exercise as I wish and I do. Now, I invite you before I explore the big idea to visit our websites, covest.com for corporate programs, for public programs, and charlescovest.com for details about the self-awareness and passion quest. My books are available from both sites. Passionate People Produce, my first book. Passionate Performance, my second book. Passion Points to Ponder, you can subscribe to them. The Self-Awareness and Passion Quest Manifesto is available. Other resources are available. If you enjoy this show, please subscribe to the YouTube or the podcast if you haven't yet, and please share it amongst your family, friends, and colleagues. I'd be most grateful. Now, the big idea. How old will you be when you die of old age? I say that your longevity is a matter of choice. It is not determined by your genes. Now, you might die of a, of a, of a car accident tomorrow. Something might happen that kills you early. But plenty of people allegedly die of old age. You start to think about that. Hmm, what is I wonder if this coffee is helping me live a long time, by the way. Hmm, I think it is because... I believe it is so. When it's coming into my body, my brain says, this is doing me good. I think it is. Your ageing process is deeply related to your beliefs around ageing. And in my health journey, when I first went to a naturopath in 1965, I understood deeply what this whole complexity around this body is of the links between mind and spirit and body and the fact that the medical profession right around the world all of the knowledge that we know around the body experts have told me that they consider we understand less than five percent of how this body functions of what's going on inside our cells this is incredibly complex Experiments use the placebo effect. What's the placebo effect? If you believe you're taking a pill, it will have an impact on you because of your belief about that pill. So similar to aging, what is the aging process? Every cell in your body is renewed. The latest science I've seen is that most of the cells in your body in 12 months are new. So how come we age? The science on it is incredibly complex but let me say that evidence that i've seen shows that your belief around this process is crucial to what's going to happen to you i've read some wonderful stories one of the practices one of the dental practices that julie consults with deeply um, they have grandparents they're originally from peru they have a grandparent who always wanted to be a lawyer so he got his law degree at the age of 93 and then practiced as a divorce lawyer for some 10 years before he died. Just imagine that, going to start studying for a law degree at the age of 87, so you get a law degree at 93 and then practice. I've read wonderful, wonderful stories of people in New York over 100 years of age running professional financial advice services. There are some remarkable stories about people who have chosen to live a long time and have behaved in that way. Now, some people say they don't want to live a long life. 
Well, I say anyone who's not doing what they're passionate about, of course, would be happy to die at 70. Oh, yeah, three score years and 10 was the old saying. Oh, 80 will do me. I ask people, how old do you want to be when you die? Oh, 80 will do me. What? I want to live till I'm 120 minimum. Minimum. And when you decide those decisions, suddenly, when you are 50 or 55 or 60, if you if you think you're going to live, if you believe you can live till 120, then 60 is not old. Your beliefs about what's possible shift. Like just imagine the thought process that goes in to your head if you're 87 years of age and you say, I think I want to practice law. And you go to university to get a law degree. Everything changes when you shift your thoughts around what old age is. And your body will behave differently because of the instructions that you're giving from your mind. Now, this belief system that you have around old age also relates to the people that you hire or the attitude of the leaders in your organisation to hiring older people. It's interesting to see big corporations, McDonald's, Bunnings, Coles and Woolworths hiring older employees. There is going to be a shortage of employees. Indeed, Australian companies are complaining about not being able to find good staff. So, so understanding and having a belief about yourself as a great potential employee means that you will apply for jobs, even though there is discrimination, proven discrimination in Australia against anybody over 50. There are websites now available that help people find jobs when they're a bit older, but wiser employers understand the value of older employees or older team members. Now, one of the issues around getting older is that we have set views, you know, that that we say this is the proper way to do something and so companies don't want to employ older people because they don't learn as quickly as young people. Well I've worked with companies, I've run long-term development programs in companies where they shifted their focus from employing people in their 20s to people in their 50s and the long, and the long service of their employees increased dramatically because the youngsters wanted to go to the next job, the next job. Even though the oldies took three, four weeks longer to train, they stuck around longer. The impact on profit was huge. Now, there are benefits and drawbacks from employing older people, just like there are benefits and drawbacks from employing younger people. So I would urge you in your company to help shift the thinking around old age. Share this show with decision makers in your organization because there are some wonderful, wonderful people in their 60s and their 70s who would make great team members in the right environment. So I have seven tips for you to help you on this journey to shift your focus and your beliefs around old age. To change the way your body is reacting to the passing of time. Here's the seven. Number one, pursue your passion. You see, your spirit doesn't age. And passion comes from your spirit. And if you are pursuing your passion, you will be constantly rejuvenated. You will have access to unlimited energy. Number two, be healthy. Remember my definition of health, my own definition that I've developed based on the work that I've been doing for the last 28 years. Your health is the unique, optimal balance for you of mental, physical, and spiritual elements. That's what it means to be healthy. The healthier you are, the longer you will live. Number three, keep learning. There is, in my mind, no doubt that if you slow down your desire to learn, if you close your mind to new possibilities, not only will you age quicker, but dementia and Alzheimer's will be much more likely to impact your life.
learning, keeping your brain active, keeping your mind active, being hungry to learn, being like a little child. The Bible says, or Christ said in the Bible, the kingdom of God belongs to little children. Be like a child for the rest of your life. Number four, if you have unhelpful beliefs about old age, identify them and work on shifting them. Earlier episodes of the show talk about how you shift your belief system. If you need help on a belief system, come and do some one-on-one -on -one executive coaching with me. You can change beliefs. I've done a whole show on that. Number five, understand and embrace the benefits and drawbacks of being older. The benefits and drawbacks of hiring staff who are older. There are always benefits, there are always drawbacks. You cannot hire staff that don't have drawbacks. Just embrace that challenge and say, right, what sort of drawbacks do I want? Because depending on whether you hire younger or older, or when you're applying for a job, you need to articulate those benefits and drawbacks to help raise the awareness of the hiring enterprise. Number six. Keep contributing to your community. Participate in your community. Help your community to improve, particularly in the metaphysical war that is going on on our planet right now. Share your wisdom. Find places where you can contribute. That con contribution is a spiritual element of your life that will keep you young. And number seven, read stories of people who have lived for a ripe old age. Read stories of people in their 80s and 90s. The newspapers are full of it, the seniors newspapers. There's lots of stuff being produced because we are living longer, and that's evidence that what I'm saying is true, but the belief system around most people is still too low. As I said, my belief is that we can live healthily till we're 120, and your genes don't determine that. Genes, if you look, if you want to do a bit of research on that, genes are one third of what's going to happen to you in the future. You are not trapped by your genes and your genetic makeup, except for your height, of course, or certain elements. But your, the fact that your parents might have died when they were young is not a death sentence for you to die when you're young. So I hope I've provoked you to think about this question of getting older. And so the song, the song that I think is appropriate, recommended to me by my friend Tony is I'm Still Standing by Elton John. Better than I ever did. Looking like a true survivor. Feeling like a little kid. So put that song on loud. Even though it's about lost love, they're great lyrics. Don't you know, I'm still standing better than I ever did. You can keep doing that every morning. I'm still standing better than I ever did because your body is rejuvenating. My quote that I think is very relevant if we're talking about aging by the famous Albert Schweitzer. He said this, in everyone's life at some time, our inner fire goes out. It is then burst into flames by an encounter with another human being. We should all be thankful for those people who rekindle the inner spirit. That's what I hope I'm doing in this show, helping people to rekindle their inner spirit. I do that as a passion provocateur, rekindling the human spirit. There's another quote that I learnt from a wonderful man called Jim Roach. Had a, built a brilliant business. His sons Ken Roach and Dennis Roach were clients when I was a lawyer. So was Jim in our law firm. And I learned from him at his 80th birthday party. His mantra was, good judgment comes from experience. Experience comes from bad judgment. And what else does experience give you? Well, experience gives you new ways to think. So as you get older, you get new ways to think. So here's my bit of humour for the day. Before going to Europe on business in the days when you could fly, of course, a man drove his Rolls Royce to a downtown New York City bank and went in to ask for an immediate loan of $5,000. The loan officer, taken aback, requested collateral. And so the man said, well, 
Then, here are the keys to my Rolls Royce. The loan officer promptly had the car driven in the bank's underground parking for safekeeping and gave him $5,000. Two weeks later, the man walked through the bank's doors and asked to settle up his loan and get his car back. That will be $5,000 in principal and $15.40 in interest. The loan officer said. The man wrote out a cheque and started to walk away. Wait, sir. The loan officer said, while you were gone, I found out you are a millionaire. Why in the world would you need to borrow $5,000? The man smiled. Where else could I park my Rolls Royce in Manhattan for two weeks and pay only $15.40? <laughs> I love it. My health tip. If you want to live longer, do stretching. Stretching exercises are crucial to maintain the way your body functions. Stretching. Find a source of good stretching exercises for you. Go to a physio, ask for a regime of stretches that will work for you. My spiritual tip. Two words. Disagree lovingly. Don't end relationships because you disagree about the jab or you disagree about the science or you disagree about what governments are doing or you disagree about the value of coffee we must learn to disagree lovingly because i consider that governments around the world are wanting to divide humanity from each other we need to learn not to allow that to happen well that's it for this week's show i hope i've provoked some new thoughts in you please visit our websites if you enjoy the show please share it please subscribe please consider your beliefs about aging please consider your beliefs about older people around you. Please consider your beliefs about interacting with older people. One thing that is going to happen is that aged care carers in Australia are needed. The number of carers needed for aging people is predicted to rise by 700,000. Now what that means is older people will need more care. My wish for you is that you will never need care. You will never need an aged care carer looking after you. Have a great week. Thanks for being with us. Work on your beliefs. Work on your health. Work on disagreeing lovingly. And I look forward to being with you next week. Bye.